Yo, what's up guys, Juan here, and today is day one down here in Fort Myers. And before I left, especially once I announced that I was going to pro ball to coach, one of the questions that I had to answer the most was, how does it feel, how does it feel? And truly, honestly, I didn't really know how to answer that because literally any emotion that you can think of, happy, sad, anxious, nervous, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I, I felt in one way or another, right? The sadness of leaving my daughter for seven months or just being in and out of her life physically, right? As a physical being, I'm obviously, uh, with, with 2022, the year that we're in, FaceTime is a beautiful thing. So there'll be a lot of that going on, but you know, that that's really like the sad part. Uh, my father not being present on earth uh, in order to see this transpire. Also incredibly sad. Happy? Yeah, like I'm going pro ball, baby. I'm going to coach and develop pro players. That is really wicked exciting. And every synonym in the thesaurus to the word excited, I'm feeling. Okay, and, and anxious, nervous, not knowing, right? You do not know what you do not know. So there's always that part of it, but a full spectrum of feelings. But today, more than anything, I really just wanted to talk about how I got here, kind of my story. And I want to start this story four years ago when I left college baseball due to a number of different reasons and variables, a lot of them self-induced uh, mistakes that, you know, I, I was still growing up and in hindsight now, five years later, I realized that the atmosphere of college baseball wasn't conducive to my mental well-being. And I'm glad that I, I realized that because it's still baseball at the end of the day, but it's sometimes the atmosphere, you become a product of your atmosphere, right? And uh, it, got, it got a little ugly for me. I wasn't too happy with it. So four years ago, four plus years ago, I decided, this is before I knew all of this, I'm gonna take a year off. Maybe I'll go back to college baseball. That was the initial plan this entire time. Take a year off, reset, regroup, learn from mistakes, and go back. So what I ended up doing is I ended up applying or DMing different types of programs within my area here in the North Shore. I reached out to multiple travel programs and I even applied at a, there's an extra innings near us. I even applied at, at an extra innings. I didn't hear back from anybody except for one person who reached back immediately uh, via, I think it was Instagram was the platform that I, that I, reached him out and that's obviously Matt Antonelli. So I reached out, I gave him my resume. I said, you know, I have a year off, wasn't really looking to get paid. Don't, I, anybody that really knows me, don't really care too much about the money side. I mean, I obviously there's different sides of the spectrum. I need to make a living. I get that, yada, yada. But it, it's just my belief system that if you are going to provide a good product, why do you have to be, for lack of a better term, a snake oil salesman or be chasing money, right? Chasing money, make no money, right? It just comes to you when, when you're providing something of value. So that's just my belief system. So I wasn't really, I wasn't looking for a paycheck or anything like that. I think he gave me, I can't remember the exact figure, but you know, he gave me a, a little bit of money to coach the 18U team for that summer. So I showed up in November in the off season and would only show up to 18U practices, would only do the 18U games during the summer. I just wasn't sure where I was gonna go with life. And eventually I, I came to the realization in the midst of that 18U season that, man, I, I really enjoy this. 18U baseball came to me in the right time of, of life where I was really stressed out uh borderline depressed i'm not going to say depressed because that's a strong word 
but borderline, like I was inching towards it. At the very least, we'll say this. If there's a line that says depression, I was inching closer to that line. Not, not really sure if I would categorize myself as depressed. But I realized, and 18U Baseball, I even told myself, man, these kids are committed already. They're going to college at the end of this summer. Let's just make this a fun summer. And we were winning games, so that helps. I mean, we weren't undefeated or anything like that, but we were very competitive, winning games, over 500, all that jazz. So that definitely helps. Uh, winning is the best deodorant. But my focal point, I'll never forget, my focus was, yo, these guys are friends. Let's just get these bonds, get these relationships even stronger. Let them remember their last summer going into college baseball as a fun summer. I really enjoyed playing baseball that summer for Coach Juan. That was my goal for, for that summer. So it, it came to me at the right point and it really freed me mentally. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do this again. And I asked Matt if he would have me back and said, yeah, you can have the 16 U's next summer. Awesome, so still only one team. So I have the 16 U's for year number two. And in the middle of winter workouts that year, I came to the realization like, holy crap, I love this. Player development, I love it. This might be what I want to do. Now Matt committed X amount of dollars to me to just coach the 16 U's. So back to like the money part, it doesn't matter. So I said, let me provide more towards Antonelli baseball. Let me provide more value to these kids. I believe that if I'm there daily, we can do something really cool, right? I can take care of the pitching. Matt can take care of the hitting. I can help out where needed. So I decided not to, not to leave like every day. Like every day I would go. I had a, a little job to pay bills. So I would go to my work uh, let's say 8 to 4 p.m., 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., somewhere around that area. And I would go, I would bring clothes to work. I would change right into baseball clothes, go straight to the facility till nine o'clock every day to the point where like Matt would, I would walk in, he's like, you're here again. And at, at this point, we didn't, we didn't have like, uh, we didn't know each other, right? So he, he doesn't really know me as a person. And when I say I have nothing else to do, I, I like I made a lot. I, I'm pretty sure the quote was, "Well, what else am I going to do? Go home and pet my cat, right?" Like that. That was I think that was the quote that I used verbatim, and he laughed. But I was serious. Like, what else? What else am I going to do but lie in bed and and snuggle with my cat? Like, what else would I be doing? So I would go every day, every day. I realized I liked it even more, and I felt like I was providing. A value to the players and providing value to the program so I just kept going kept going kept going kept going still only had one team and then that team uh, assisted coach was Johnny Reyna that summer I went from the 18U season which was this mental relief this lift of you know inching towards depression was whew, gone and then that 16U season that team gave me so much affirmation to what I was doing as a baseball coach that, oh my gosh, like, okay, I feel like I'm pretty good at this. Um, I feel like, I, I think the number one thing for me is, can I get guys to play the game the way I want it to be played? And that team just committed themselves, listened. They were I mean, I've had some pretty coachable groups. They were easily one of the more coachable groups that I've ever had. Their demeanor, the mental, the focus, everything that you can think of, every intangible that you would provide a good solid team, that team had. And it gave me affirmation. It, it gave me, if it almost pushed me to learn more. Oh man, like I'm providing this, let me provide more. But I, I wasn't there yet mentally. Like I felt like I knew the game. But I only knew the game to the point. And that's true today. I only know the game to a point. Like, I'm going to be learning a lot of stuff. So every day, this is no joke. I would go to practice or a game, go home, study baseball. Practice, game, go home, study baseball. And my full day was actually like this. Wake up at 8 in the morning, go to work till 4 o'clock, 
go straight to the facility, do some sort of baseball activity from five, six o'clock to nine o'clock at night. Go home, dinner, shower, sit in front of a computer and read. Grab a book and read. Listen to videos, podcasts, YouTube, whatever it was. If I found somebody that I felt was smarter than me, I was diving right into it. And, and to kind of add a tangent to that, one of the best parts for me about Antonio Baseball is I, I walked into a room where I wasn't the smartest guy. Like Matt and the way that he does things and the he's so detail oriented he's so focused and the, the most impressive thing about matt antonelli is his work rate without being caffeinated that man does not drink caffeine and he is out of his mind with his work rate and it drove me like you know i gotta match that even though again back to the money i wasn't getting i wasn't getting paid but I got to match it. Like, that's how I felt inside. I have to match it. I need to go home. I need to dive into this. I need to learn all this stuff. I need to reach out to some facilities that I feel are doing a very, very good job in the baseball community and learn from them and, and go to them and talk to these guys and build relationships. And one of the benefits of being with Antonelli Baseball is once I said I was with Antonelli Baseball, a lot of these people would just reach out immediately. So I feel like I was fortunate enough to talk to a lot of people that would not have spoken to me otherwise. Um, that's just my feeling. Who knows? Maybe these people would have. But like my feeling, like these people are re like reaching back immediately. It was awesome. So I was learning so much. So by the time like the 2019 season or the 2020 uh, summer came, you know, now I have two teams. And then I'm basically there all the time. Full time. I think 2020 was the first year Matt allowed me or offered me to to be there full time, uh, both in uh, or with the financial aspect. And I was essentially just replicating what I did in 2019. I just did it in 2020, but now I was getting paid, which was obviously nice. So I was able to quit my job, and that benefit. I, I tell people all the time, like, listen, you go to this guy or you train with that person, or you go to this program, you train with that person, they might be great. They may be very good, but there's one thing that I have over them, and it's I don't have the nine to five that I have to go to. The eight hours that they are spending on work to gain their salary, rightfully so, by the way, I'm not demeaning that, but it's just the point. The eight hours that they're spending on another job, I am spending on this on baseball and over time that has skyrocketed me skyrocketed me past i mean i don't want to say but it, it it at the very least got me word of mouth more clientele people like i started having to say no to people because i couldn't fit them into my schedule just sold out there were weeks that I would have 48 hours of training sessions, 48. I just kept going and going and going 70 hour weeks. Didn't matter. Like, especially during the season, once you factor in games, 70 hour weeks and you just keep going and going and going and going and you wake up the next day and you do it again. And it didn't feel like work to me. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be there. I enjoyed being there. I enjoyed doing it. So I just kept going. And without ever seeking pro ball, I got reached out to three times over the last year, year and a half, and finally landed uh, this job. And that, that, that was the most, more powerful thing for me. The resources that were used to acquire me was impressive. I was blown away by the resources and professionalism and, and it really felt, it feels like, oh my gosh, like, it feels like they, they want me part of that organization. I got to do it. And I did it. Obviously, I'm down here. But it's sad because I'm leaving something that I felt like I helped build, whether it be 10%, whatever incremental percentage you want to throw at. I'll take. It could be freaking 1%. It don't matter. But I, I really felt like I helped. The last two years at Antonio Baseball, I helped drive that program to what it is today. And 
I just helped it and got it, but it all starts from the top. And let me tell you something right now. You want your child to play for Matt Antonelli. You just do. Like as a teacher, mentor, role model, human being, etc. You want your kid there. And I can't emphasize it enough. Forget about the baseball stuff. Just straight up work rate, want to, like all the intangibles. Human being, better person, or becoming a better person, right? Over time. You, you want to play for him in that program. And that comes from a biased uh, state of mind. But to me, it's the definitive truth if you live in that space in Massachusetts. And I will not only argue it, to me, it wouldn't even feel like an argument because I feel like I'm just telling the truth. I don't have to rebuttal anything. So that's my take. That's how I got here. Support the channel, smash that subscribe button, like, share, and comment, and hopefully, I'll have some cooler videos uh, as we go, but I'm not going to force the issue because I'm going to want to be here. See you guys later.